Complete novices and professionals alike both visit star parties to check out the wonders of the night sky. One thing that is commonly overlooked is preparing your car for the star party. So whether you're attending a star party at a local observatory like this one, or you're going to a multi-night event, you'll want to make sure that your car is prepared just in case you have to get into it. Now, the following tips will also work if you're going to a dark sky location for a weekend, because it'll keep things nice and dark for those around you. So you might be wondering why I bring this up. Well, at public star parties, it is very common that people get in and out of their cars for various reasons, and most common these days, when you unlock your car, the lights flash and that can ruin people's dark adaptation, meaning that they'll have to wait somewhere between 15 minutes to a half an hour for their eyes to fully adapt to the darkness again. Another thing that commonly happens at star parties is just when people open their door, they forget to turn the dome light off on their ceiling. That also ruins dark adaptation. So for example, at a multi-night event, one reason you might be getting into your car would be to put your food away. That way no critters or any other wildlife get into your food. So when you go to put your food away, you don't want to be lighting up your neighbors. And my last example is for public star parties at places like this that don't last all night. When people are leaving, one common thing that happens is that people leave their headlights on. So when they turn their car on, the headlights come blaring on and those that were planning on sticking around for a little while have to dark adapt again. Now all of the previous examples I just mentioned are primarily for visual astronomy. So when you're looking through a telescope with your eyes, but people out there taking pictures might also be affected as well. For example, your headlights could go through the frame of somebody trying to get a Milky Way picture and that person drove hours to get there to get that Milky Way shot. That could be a little bit depressing to find out that, your sh that their shot got ruined because somebody drove by with headlights on. Now there are some things you can do to help keep your car nice and dark when you're at a star party to keep yourself and others around you happy stargazers. Now, one quick thing to note, I am not a car enthusiast as much as I am an astronomy enthusiast. All cars are different. Some cars might have options that others don't. So if your car has some issues where you can't turn certain lights off, please consult your owner's manual or do a quick Google search for your make and model of your car to find out how to turn off those certain lights. But let's go over the big ones that you need to turn off. Now, first and foremost, the big one that needs to be turned off is the dome light, the one on the ceiling. Usually that one, these days, there's a little button on the ceiling that you can just turn that off. That way when you open your door, the lights don't come on. The other easy to turn off one is your headlights. Now some European countries have some standards in place that when your car is on, headlights have to be on. While that is true, there are ways to turn them off. Like I said, consult your owner's manual. Now one thing I find extremely helpful here in the city is using a dash cam. It's always a good idea to have video proof just in case of an accident. But in the case of going to a star party, the screen on it, as you can see right here, is very bright. If you have one and you get into your car for any reason, you might set off the parking monitor, which will turn the screen on. So if you have a dash cam, definitely unplug it and take it down if you can, or cover up the screen so that way it's not lighting everything up. Two things to be aware of that aren't necessarily at the top of everybody's mind when it comes to dealing with your car, and that is your dash, and if you have a modern car with a touch screen. Now, with the way that most modern cars are today, when you turn your headlights off, the dash goes full brightness. So there are ways to deal with that, and we'll go over that here in a second. The other thing is the touch screen for your radio. Most of the time, the manufacturer has built in some way to turn that screen off, so make sure you do before it gets dark. One simple way to mitigate the dash lights, brightening up everything for you, is just bring a bed sheet, an extra spare bed sheet that you're not using, and just cover up your dash with it. And this can also cover up the touch screen on your radio. But when you do cover it up, make sure you cover it up in such a way that you can still use the steering wheel and easily get to your gear shifter. And there's a reason for that we'll get to here in a minute. Now, the other thing you might want to consider too is if you have any reason to get into your trunk. Say if the trunk of your car has the blankets you're going to be stargazing in or all of your astronomy equipment as a novice or even a professional, then you want to cover up your light or find a way to turn it off. Now, my car doesn't have a way to turn it off, so the way I mitigate this is by covering the light with gaffer tape. That way, when I pop the trunk at night, I can open it up and things stay nice and dark. And you can also do the same thing with cars that have step lights, the little lights that come under the door when you open the door so when you step out you can see what you're doing. 
you can cover that up with tape as well. Now, gaffer tape is what I recommend for it, or you can use red duct tape if you still want a little bit of light. One thing about all of those lights, and this one's more for the car enthusiasts out there, if you want, there are bulbs that you can swap out that are red bulbs but th that one's your call. I'm not saying go replace all your bulbs, but if you're a car enthusiast and an astronomy enthusiast, maybe go out and go grab some red bulbs and replace all the lights in your car with red bulbs. If you wanna do that, check out your favorite auto parts store and see if they have them for you. So before we continue, for the professionals out there or the amateurs that have been at it for a little while, what steps have you been taking to keep your car nice and dark during star parties? Now, for public star parties at places like this, you're only gonna be sticking around for a couple hours, but other people might be sticking around longer than you. You're still gonna wanna deal with your headlights and your taillights. And there is an easy way to deal with that. On top of leaving your lights off, grab an old shirt and a couple of magnets and just cover those lights up. Since they'll be covered up with something easily removable, you can leave those on as you drive to the road. Once you get to the road, park real quick, take everything off, turn all your lights on, and drive safely to your next destination. Now, the reason that I mentioned covering up your rear lights, even though they're red, if you have to hit the brake for any reason, they do get pretty bright and they can be pretty blinding. So I do recommend covering those up as well. Cover both the headlights and the tail lights up. That way, if you unlock your car for any reason, when the lights flash, nobody's gonna see it. So like in my previous example, if you must leave, there are some things you do need to keep in mind. So if you're at a multi-night event or a dark sky site, such as Cherry Springs State Park here in Pennsylvania, most of the time those have rules in place where once sunset happens, you can't leave. And there are usually a few exceptions, and that is when it's 100% cloudy and rainy or there's an emergency. And those are the only two reasons you can leave the field. Other than that, plan on sticking around all night. Now at a place like Cherry Springs and other dark sky sites, there are public areas you can park where you can be there just for a few hours and leave. And if you're only planning on being at that place for a couple hours, park in the public parking where you can leave. At this observatory, because it only lasts for a couple hours, you're gonna end up leaving, but you don't wanna be the one that blinds everybody on the field. So if you use my previous tips where you covered up your dash and you covered up your lights, you turned off your headlights, your dome lights, everything is off, don't get into your car and turn everything on. Instead, if you didn't come alone, say it was you and your partner or you brought your family, whatever the case is for you, instead of driving out with your lights on, Keep everything off so your eyes stay dark adapted while you're driving out and have somebody guide you to the road. If your family member can't do that, say that there is a physical reason that they can't walk down to the road, ask one of the staff or the volunteers at the star party to walk your car out. Chances are they'll be happy to because you're keeping things nice and dark. Like I said, once you get to the road, take all the covers off of everything, pack it away, turn your lights on, and drive safely to your next destination. So when visiting a dark sky park or a star party, whether it's local or a multi-night event, we want to keep things nice and dark to enjoy the wonders of the night sky. If you start by preparing your car before you even get there, that'll make things a whole lot smoother and everybody around you will be way happier. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.